Hi everybody, I'm Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. Thank you so much for joining me to watch this video. Um, I'm going to do another sunset ribbon pour. This time I've, I've scoured the internet and I found um, an absolutely beautiful looking sunset um, colour palette and it's very pastel-y, so actually very different to all my, my previous other um, sunset ribbon pours. So I'm really excited. Um, so I've got some new colours, um, I will show you and then we'll get started. So these are my colours. So the sand is at the bottom of the picture and I've got the bronze and there's a very pale purple um, which blends into the sea, which are these colours here. So I've got Amsterdam bronze, Amsterdam ultramarine violet, but with I've added some white to it so it's paler. I've got Pebio Studio Acrylics iridescent blue green, Amsterdam turquoise blue, and then I'm going to have a little bit of um, De La Rowney Thalo turquoise. So it's not pastel -y, but there's just a little bit of darker turquoise just uh, at the horizon. So I think that will work really well. And then for just above the horizon, so the, the bottom of the sunset, I've got some Pebio Studio Acrylics Gold, De La Rowney Cadmium Yellow Hue, but I've added some more white to that so it's paler. And then another Pebio Studio Acrylics um, Opaque blue okay opaque cobalt blue again i've added a little bit of white to pay to soften it down a little bit windsor and newton powder blue amsterdam light rose and then some amsterdam caput morton violet but again slightly paler i've made it slightly um paler shade um, and then so i've been adding this essentials royal and lang nickel white i've been adding that to the to the various paints um, so I've mixed them with PVA glue and water. So I'll put my, all my recipes um, for my mixtures in the video description. So first of all, I'm going to layer up the sea and the beach section of the painting. Um, so I'm gonna layer up three cups. I'm only doing um, quite a small canvas, so it's a um, 30 by 42 centimeter. So I don't have that much paint in each cup. So I'm gonna layer up the three cups, but I know it's only gonna come up to probably just over halfway, but that, that's fine. I just want the separation with the three cups. So at the very bottom of the painting, I want it to be the majority bronze and a little bit of the purple. Um, so I'm going to pour some in. Um, I've added a little bit of extra paint to this white. Um, I don't know if you saw my last um, uh, ribbon pour video, but the white, something was wrong with the white and it was very, very thin, I think, and it created lots of bubbly effects. Now, while I really liked that, I don't really want it again. So the white, I've actually added just a tiny bit of silver to it, and it's actually just now a bit thicker because I am so, so scared of getting, of getting it too thin. I would rather it too thick because I know that if it's on the thicker side, it's not going to, um, it's not gonna dilute like it did on the last pour. So I want to save a little bit of this purple for my middle cup. So the majority of bronze, I think. Yeah. So the paints are really nice and thick. So they're just, the paints are just sitting on top of each other really nicely. They're not sinking when I'm pouring them in. Right, so I think that is the first cup done. Mostly bronze, a little bit of purple, a little bit of the whitey gray. Right, next cup, I really want to be um, a blend then of the turquoise and the violet, the purpley color. Um, so let's add a little bit of that in. The reason I'm mixing up the colors like this is just so that I can get um, some blending. I'm going to get some probably quite stark lines where the, the colours, the when I empty the cups out, where they meet. But I'm what I want to try and do is get them blending as much as possible just by adding the different colours into each of the cups. So a bit of purple here and here, um, and then some of the turquoise here and here. 
So this will be mostly that turquoise. And then I'm going to finish the purple up now. with that cup then my last cup um, is going to be the really darker colors um, I'm going to start off with a bit of the really dark phthalo turquoise so this I think is going to be the fullest cup let's just add that last bit of white in there Right, so next I'm going to do my sky. So I've got the yellow and the gold right at the bottom of the sky. So that's that's one cup. And then I think I'm gonna have a darker cup and then a paler cup. But I might mix these four cups um, around a little bit. And then I've got some white as well. So this cup really is just gonna be the yellow and the gold, maybe a little bit of the white. So I've got my canvas ready. Um, for the first time ever on a ribbon pour, I'm going to pour it in the portrait position that it will be in when it's finished. So sky, sea, sand. Normally it's it's across, it's long ways. So I'm pouring around to the side, but this time, because it's a smaller canvas, I'm going to be able to pour, hopefully, in straighter lines. So just thinking where to start. I think because of that, I think I'm going to start with the sky. Let's move these ones out of the way then. I think I'm going to start at the top and work down. I've got a bit more of the sky colours than the sea, so I'm maybe going to start... In fact, I might just draw a line on here. I'm going to draw what looks like a roughly straight line. Yep, so my sky section here at the top is just fractionally great bigger than the, the bottom section. So the, the bottom of the sunrise first. So a ribbon pour is just ribbons of paint back and forward. So I'm going to tip the paint out the cup and move my hand back and forward at the same time to create these beautiful ribbons of paint and you'll see that the colours will be blending as they come out the cup. Right, that's the bottom. So then we're going to go for quite dark, the darker blues next in the sunrise. And I'm just going to overlap very slightly here, just so it there it's sort of blending. So I'm just doing there it's just some very thin ribbons of paint. A 
and then the top one. And then again, I'm just going to come down very slightly. In fact, I might come down all the way because this is a beautiful pale pink cup. And that will just really help to blend it all together. Great. So now let's start with the horizon. Wow, these colours are gorgeous. This is a beautiful cup, this one. Just some smaller ribbons up into the dark green there. sand. I absolutely love this bronze colour, this Amsterdam bronze and I'd recently run out of it and I just felt lost until it arrived. I love it. Just, it, just a little tiny bit of bronze I think just goes a long way in a painting. It's just such a rich warm colour. Right. I've deliberately left just a little bit in each cup, only the smallest, smallest amount, because um, I might need that in a minute. What I'm going to do is just very delicately touch the painting now, just dab it to get rid of any little bare patches, any bald patches. I'm going to tilt it so that will um, straighten all my lines, but it will just help all the paint to flow. If there's a bald patch, often it just it struggles to get over that as it's um, as I'm tilting it. Right, let's start tilting. I've got a reasonable amount of paint on here, but I haven't got loads of excess. So what I think I'm going to do is just tilt it one way, just to get that edge covered because that edge is really important. Once I've got just enough paint over to get that covered, I'm then going to tilt it back the other way. Um, let's just give this a good torch first. I can see lots of air bubbles. Now, I quite like bubbles in these paintings because it just adds a little bit more sort of detail. And I think bubbles in the sky look a bit cloud-like and bubbles in the water look like bubbles. So I actually quite like having some bubbles or creating just, they, sometimes they just create the odd few cells. Right, so I'm gonna tilt it just slightly, just enough to get it over the edge. I'm just gonna have to keep checking because I can't see. Right, and let's turn it the other way. It's going to torch again.
Right, what I'm thinking so far is that this blue band looks very, very dark and stark. So because I saved just a little bit of the paint, I'm going to use that now just to blend the colours a bit more. So here's the painting at the right in the right position. Um, I have decided once it's dry, I'm going to just do a darker band of the turquoise. I wanted a really dark band of turquoise there, but I haven't got it. It's blended too much with the lighter colours. Um, so I will just add to the horizon, just sharpen that up and do a really dark band. Um, I'm actually extremely happy with the purple. I was a bit nervous of putting purple in because purple, you, you don't really get in the sea or the sand, but the from the photograph, it just, it, the, there definitely was a shade of purple. So I'm really happy that it's there, but it's not dominant. It's just, it's quite subtle. And also it really does calm the bronze down. So it, the bronze isn't too dark um, at the bottom at all. So I'm really happy with that. Um, really happy with my sea. Um, I'm unsure about the yellow and the blue at the moment um i think it works in terms of what i was uh, trying to copy but i'm just not sure i think maybe just gold would have been better um and maybe the paler blue um but it it, it i knew what colors i had and the colors were the ones i chose so I, I shouldn't be surprised but um yeah the top section i'm loving that's beautiful the really pale colors um i guess just that i think that blue is a bit dark um, but it will add contrast. So, um, yeah, we'll just see how this one dries. So here it is, all finished, all dried. Um, I do love it now. I didn't when it first dried, um, but I have changed it slightly. Um, so the dark turquoise horizon, I've coloured that in. Um, there wasn't enough definition, so I've now given it a really nice, dark, deep, um, line at the horizon. Um, I was not happy with the yellow and the blue. So you can probably see that the yellow is more gold now. So what I did was just brush some diluted gold over the top. So the yellow still shines through, but it's got a gold over the top of it. And then the gold, I have also spread a very thin layer actually over the blue and it just, it just dampened down the blue. So it just not, it wasn't quite so bright. Um, I think it was just it was just too stark. Um, and then the other thing I did was got some pearl white um, and some of the pale pink and just done some extra sort of very um, light strokes over the other colours just to try and blend it a bit more. Um, it was supposed to be a really pastel -y piece uh, and it now is quite pastel -y, except for the horizon, but that's fine. Um, I love the shore really pleased with it. I love how the sound is peeking through the water here. I'm so happy with the purple. Um, purple, I think, as I said, isn't maybe a traditional colour in a in a beach um, scene, but it, I really like it, really happy with it. Um, and then the final thing to show you is, can you see just about here, I've put some pearl white on here to try and give it a kind of a shimmer 
can you see there? It's a little bit more iridescent to try and make it a bit more shimmery, like the reflection of the of the sun on the water. You can just about see it there. But the whole thing, as you can see, is really, really iridescent. Um, and then when I varnish it, it will really, really shine. So um, wasn't happy to start with, but now I am. I'm really pleased with it. The colours are gorgeous. And I love just that depth of that horizon. Um, so please let me know what you think. Please leave me a comment. Um, give me your thoughts. I'd love to know what everyone else thinks of this. Um, and thank you so, so much for taking the time. So thank you so, so much for taking the time um, for watching, to watch my video. Great. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.